Representative uh, Mrs. Kula Mula. Uh, I'm on here on her mission. This is not my mission. So I am the head of uh, Population and Development Unit, and my name is Dasheda Sogot. Um, let me start by saying the Honorable Commissioner, Lagos State Ministry of Economic Planning, and the Honorable Commissioner, Lagos State Ministry of Education, and permit me to stand on the exiting protocol has been established by the COMPARE. Uh, let me say that from what I'm hearing, I want to put on record that when we organized the national workshop on harnessing the demographic dividend in 2014, as far back as that, that was even before African Union brought about its roadmap, Lagos State went to work. It's not in 2019 when <clears throat> it's not in 2019 when the roadmap was developed, or in 2020 when the profile was also developed. So in 2015, Lagos State did an analysis of the demographic dividend situation in Lagos State, and it's on record. So uh, we are very glad to partner with Lagos. Uh, on this mission. I will leave the def definition of demographic dividend to the experts. I'm sure Prof will do that in his presentation, but let me focus on the speech of my country representative. The benefit of all the Goshans and Nigerians in general, uh, I would like to launch and open uh, the Lagos State Demographic Dividend and the, and the entire plan. Well, the question has to expect what you have just mentioned, dividend, in every aspect of our lives, in education, in technology, in agriculture, in science, in everything that uh, the administration of the governor, Mr. Baide Sonwolu, has been pursuing. So it's going to be just for us to lay out the plans and for people to see that all of the things that uh, we are executing in Lagos, we shall continue to do them and take them to the next level. Okay, there seems to be a lot of similarity between the 2030 plan of Enyibeti and this. What is the major difference or similarity between this? Well, uh, but, uh, the, the similarity that I have seen is uh, the attention that we are giving to the youth attention that we are giving to our young uh, population. We know that they are the centerpiece of everything that we are doing. So this particular one that you are talking about is just to come in specifics. That of a Yigbeti is a bit general. But all the same, everything is targeted at our young people, how to let them know that uh, not just that the future belongs to them, that uh, here and now they are in charge. Thank you, sir. Okay, my name is Rhoda Robinson, Executive Director of Haysi Health Initiative. Can you tell us the economic benefits of today's event? Um, the economic benefits of today's event is the economic benefits of the future because we are pushing for continued investments in the development of young people and not just um, a tokenistic mention of um, what people, young people are, but um, ensuring that they are active participants in every plan that um, it's towards economic development of the country itself. So focusing on the investments in harnessing demographic dividend is a win-win for all across all sectors. Um, our take home for today is that we are all equal partners in harnessing demographic dividend and we all have different roles to play to ensure that young people are not left behind and we have a future that is sustainable. Thank you. Produ production harnessing it significantly to ensure that the gaps do not exist. Um, you will understand that um, we are moving from where the population is skewed from a higher amount of them being on the dependent side than on the productive side. And so what do we do to harness it? Um, this to ensure that there is significant growth in production. Uh, and you will see all of that. Um, it's around education uh, because we need to give our people the skill of the future. We need to attract them into training possibilities that allow them um, to be productive. 
um, it's around health, um, in other words, to ensure that our people are not getting sick, because when they get sick, um, they, one, one thing they lose, they lose their revenues and they lose their savings as well in taking care of the sickness. The other is modern infrastructure, the livability and human development index of, of Lagos to just ensure we keep it strong and going. And the third, the fourth being governance, right, to ensure that the governance system supports production and supports um, the productivity of our people as a whole. So it's along those lines, um, of course, you will see certain major announcements were made during the conclusion of Ehigbeti. We announced um, the, the approval of the Lekki Airport. We announced the Media City. Um, we announced um, um, the governor signing laws um, to the House of Assembly around our civil litigation systems. Um, we announced uh, laws around the Lagos State Wealth Fund, the first subnational fund um, in, in, in Nigeria and in West Africa. So we continue to drive a lot of those narratives, right, um, to just get Lagos to go. But the biggest of all narratives is the fact that we are able to work together, um, both the citizens and the government, to lift Lagos up. Well, the economic benefit is that we flip our people um, and make them increasingly productive. Uh, and out of that production, we shall increase the gross domestic product for Lagos. And we are able to percolate it down to the welfare of the individual by increasing the per capita income of the individual. It will stimulate a lot of employment um, and it will stimulate a lot of hope. It will also point our people to focus on the right things. Right, to observe the progress that we are making and to participate in it. That's what it's about. So how do you hope to sustain this uh, development? It's um, significant in many ways. Um, this is a work where Lagos has led the country in defining uh, what the potential demographic dividends are and therefore work out a roadmap to achieving it. Um, the interesting thing and the exciting thing about this roadmap is that we're launching it at a time where we've also integrated it um, to the Lagos State 30-Year Development Plan. What that means is that the motion and the bus has also left on its implementation uh, because that entire plan is um, cooked around a framework um, that assures that the people of Lagos do own it and that they hold um, all stakeholders responsible for its implementation and that indeed it will be implemented through successive governments um, given the commitment we have shown to the development plan of which this demographic dividend roadmap is part of. This roadmap, sir. Well, the roadmap is actually intended to unnest the youthful population of Lagos State so that um, you know, at the end, you know, the, the state would be, you know, will still continue to retain its position as, you know, the number one state, not only in Nigeria, but also, you know, as a model mega city for the whole of uh, uh, Africa. Well, the, the economic benefit is quite obvious because we are looking at a situation in which in the next uh, uh, few years, we want to see how we can improve on the competencies, the skills of our youth. You know, so that's actually the the intention behind uh, the roadmap. Well, the the take home is that uh, it's a joint responsibility of both uh, the private and the public sector, when all stakeholders need to work together, and uh, so that you know we leave the next uh, generation to be in a better position than we are. Thank you, sir. I'm Are Adebayo Shodade, Special Advisor to the Governor of Lagos State on Economic Planning and Budget. Thank you, sir. plan is driven um, from an economic planning standpoint, a medium-term sector strategy, which is part of our budgetary system. Uh, beyond that, we believe that the people of Lagos will continue to vote the right kind of government as they have done all the while and, and repeat it this time around so that we'll continue to build Lagos and strengthen our capacities to execute on this plan. So, um, my final words are going to be 
in queue with what um, last um, person that spoke My name is about. Morris. Sorry, Miss Morris said. Um, I don't see ourselves. I don't see young people as shareholders. You are the shareholders, and you are the stakeholders too. But we are the stake. <laughs> so we are asking you that haven't held us, haven't trained us thus far. Mm. Give us the space to shine, and to on the long run, on the long run, we are going to be able to achieve the demographic dividend that we want only if you will allow us to give back. And giving back, not on the seats, not in crowd, on the table. And I hope that that is going to be allowed. So help us God. <laughs> in Nigeria, and a time came where it appears some two other states were actually overtaking Lagos. But with these events today, Lagos has actually retained the leading position by launching these two products. And I want to advocate that you should please let's search ahead. Um, some other states are actually trying to, most times they don't even want to hear Lagos. When, whether they like it or not, Lagos has always been a good example in the country. So we should not rest on our oars. As a researcher, I'm much more interested in the kind of data and research output that we could leverage upon in Lagos State. So that when we, when we want to say, okay, this is what should be done. We've seen the results. It's actually highly data in intensive. So we need to reorganize our data harm, real statistics, in such a way that on a regular basis, we'll be able to track the progress of this plan is just a document. We could set up committees and say, yes, we need to do this, we need to do this. So we need a mechanism in place right away with, for us to be able to track the progress and monitor it in a specific term. And I think that is achievable. For the youth, fine. We've had a lot of investments, but I also want to say that nothing comes easy especially from these people that are holding the stake. So you need to be able to hang mm. that trust mm -hmm. and do strategically position your staff to take away your stake. Thank you. Thank you. you know, demographic dividend is not just about having you know, people in the working population bracket. Mm. It's actually about you know, having empowered people in that bracket. Um, we have, or the state has already, you know, documented, you know, the roadmap. We have the, the strategy document as well. But um, I also know that Nigeria is filled with lots of action plans, rolling plans. You know, it's rolling all the time. The difference really will be in implementation. So my charge to the honorable commissioners here present and the state at large is how do you implement this? such that in five, 10 years time, we are not talking about a plan, we are talking about things that are on ground. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Omo Bolani Victorani here, Ed Sustainability Access Bank. So can you tell us how this launch is going to change the nation as at large legal states as well? Okay, so um, basically we're all aware that um, we need to harness demographic dividends. It's very important, important for us not just um, those resident in Lagos, but for us as a nation. Um, we also understand the fact that data um, is something that we need to work on or improve upon. So this is um, a great step in the right direction that involves all stakeholders, both from the public sector and the private sector. Um, we should commend Lagos State for taking the lead um, in this regard and also um, the UNFPA for supporting um, efforts um, such as this. Um, this has been on for um, a couple of years, and so um, getting to this point really is some, something commendable and what will be beneficial to us as a nation. Okay, so um, first of all, um, like was discussed um, during the panel session, 
we understand the fact that um, if we better um, understand how to analyze the data that um, we have collated or that has been received, we will better understand how to channel our resources as a nation um, towards the development of youth. We will know where to invest in. We will understand um, what to do. Um, and the current um, challenge that was also discussed about um, youth leaving Nigeria to go to other countries, I think that if we switch um, to the other side and we um, understand better and invest better, I think that um, we would be the ones that will be attracting talent into our country, into our state, and it won't be the other way around. Thank you. Thank you.